My dad had cupped hands from PD, but we worked on it an awful lot, and I'd like to share these with you. A lot of people have cupped hands from dystonia, and part of that can be if you've had a dystonic issue and then done this, and after the episode you have not massaged your hands flat, eventually those muscles are going to start to tighten in here, lengthen here, and they will remain cupped. A lot of people with arthritis have problems with this too. So lots of people can take advantage of these moves. You're going to need some of Cheryl technical equipment. You're going to need a ball that's more or less the size of a tennis ball or a real tennis ball is always the option. You're going to need a rather stiff, rather large rubber band, a medium sized rubber band, tight pair of gloves, and the most technical of all, a couple of popsicle sticks or something that's like popsicle sticks. Okay, we want to start by warming up the hands and by doing that we can have those muscles as flexible as possible. Warming up the hands works really well because if you think I'm preparing for surgery you have to wash every finger and in doing so you've massaged each finger warm with the other hand while that hand's moving and going back and forth getting that nice and warmed up getting those hands as flexible as you can and then I want you to do the whole finger wiggle every every finger is going to be going as the other fingers are too if you have cupped hands it'll look more like this and you may be very slow but I just want you to get them spread apart and warmed up the first thing we're going to do are a few strength exercises. What happens is that as the hand cups, these muscles that are used all the time get stronger and tighter and less flexible. And then these are quite long. They're elongated from being constantly stretched out and they're weak. Now we can do this and create some muscle balance and it will give you a bit more flexibility and control in your hands with that better muscle balance. The first one is the stop hand. Stop. When you do this, you're going to be putting the, the heel of the hand down here and you're going to pull these fingers back and you're going to feel it right in here because you haven't used those muscles very much. It'll look like this if your hands are cupped, but that's okay. The exercise is to think about pulling the fingers back and you're working it from the wrist. And you will feel this after eight or ten of them and just kind of hold it and do it again hold it okay the tennis ball so often people squeeze the tennis ball I see this over and over they think this is a good thing but instead what's happening it's tightening what's already tight and it's lengthening what's already long we want to go the other direction we want the tennis ball on the back of the hand you can move the tennis ball around a little bit you can try to make it go from one hand to the other. We do this in a lot of our uh, Parkinson's support groups and it's really fun because we have these things flying everywhere because it's so hard to go back and forth whether your hands are cupped, whether your hands are not cupped, just that control of trying to keep your fingers up is the good exercise and the laughter is the best exercise. Okay. Now we're going to move on to finger lifts and you'll have a surface. You're going to put your whole hand on the surface and you're going to lift the fingers and just hold momentarily and lift the fingers. Try and keep the palm down as you lift the fingertips as high as possible including the old thumb there. Then what I'd like you to do is one finger at a time doing the lift the lift, the lift, and when you get to the ring finger, if you'd like, lift the ring and little finger, but you can try to lift the ring finger and the little finger. If you were one of those people that got to play piano when you were a little kid, you can probably do the ring finger and the little finger. Be sure and go through the hand two to four times at about this rate, and if you want to, you can do both hands at the same time. You're really going to start seeing some uh, uh, strength and you're going to see a little bit of a difference if you do these maybe three or four times a week by the end of the week I think you're going to start seeing a little bit more muscle control now we're going to do some stretches 
and we want to hold these for about 10 seconds in each position and do them for four times in each position. And what you're going to do is put your hands together, and I just call this the pushover, and you take this hand and you push the other hand over. Try to push your fingertips against the fingertips of the other hand as you relax the other hand. I'm extremely flexible. This probably is not going to be what you see. Then you'll be coming up and bring it over to the other side. Try and keep your palms together and curl these fingers into the fingertips and press and hold for your 10 seconds. I'm not going to just for brevity's sake. Do that four times on each side holding 10 seconds. If of course you have the cup, this is what you're going to see, but you're still working very, very well because you're trying to force this stretch and stretching down in here as well where normally your hands are here. Okay, now I have to just kind of cheat here and see what it was I was doing. We're doing it finger to finger and what I want you to do is just taking one finger at a time. Stretch it and hold it. Stretch it and hold it. Just press fingertip against fingertip one at a time. If you go to the Facebook, you're going to see all of these listed and you're going to see photos of each one so it'll remind you what you're doing. Okay, now there's some weird things. This is splinting. And when you have done some things that your hands are warmed up, maybe you've been doing dishes, maybe you've been doing some sort of an activity, or maybe you've been doing these exercises, your hands are going to cool. And if you let your hands cool in a cupped up position like this, what's going to happen? they're going to stay cupped. They're just going to want to go back to where they were. But we can make something happen. You put that rubber band we were talking about over your hand, okay? Give it one twist and put it over your middle finger. Okay, I think you can see that. Look what happens. It keeps my hand reasonably flat. I cannot curl here. The fingers might tend to fall just a little bit, but the hand doesn't collapse like this one and round. The hand itself, the back of the hand, stays pretty flat, meaning that this and this are flatter than in just a normal relaxed position. Okay, And so with one of those on each hand, you can still move, you can still grip if you want to, but when you relax, it's going to keep it a little bit flatter. But those fingers, how do we get the fingers? Well, you put on a tight glove. Now this is really good if you're exercising and you're walking because people tend to grip when they're walking. When they're walking and they're gripping, it actually shortens your arm swing and that shortens your stride and that's a problem with Parkinson's as well. So let's not do that. Let's have our hands open. You can put on a pair of gloves take a popsicle stick, slide it in, and slide it all the way down the glove into the middle finger, and then on the ring finger. There's my hand. Nice and flat. Those fingers cannot. I'm curling my fingers, and that's as far. I can't curl those two fingers. So you can see that when you're walking on a track or you're just going out for a walk, that you can splint your hands and it'll help you with this if you're doing this. It'll also help you from curling and cupping if you've already been doing that. You can watch TV this way too. But if you're out and you're about, you can't really get these off and on that well, so you might want to go with somebody so that they can help you with your gloves. I hope that these will help you. Be sure and join me on Facebook and share with your local uh, PD support group. I'd really like to join you.